Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon, bringing you guys the weekly soul connection reading. And so this is going to be for today's date, which is Monday, February 17th, going all the way until Sunday, February 23rd. So this is going to be specifically for those of you that have a soul connection with another person that you're either in separation with or going through some sort of a challenge. We are doing group one and group two today. So let me go ahead and explain what that means. So group one is going to be represented by the Eclipse Organite by Wing and Bell. And that's going to be for those of you that are, you know, um, you're on the, you're maybe on a twin flame journey. Maybe you're just, you know, you don't know what the connection is. That's not a big deal. The labels really don't matter, but you feel connected to this individual and you're looking to reconnect with them perhaps at a later date. Maybe you understand right now that there's maybe some sort of necessary separation that has to take place for soul development, growth lessons, things like that. But your ultimate goal is to come back together with this person, perhaps at some point down the line. Number two is going to be completely different different. This right here is the honeycomb organite from Wing and Bell. So this one is going to represent those of you that maybe you've been on a twin flame journey for a while, or maybe you've just been connected to this individual, haven't really been able to shake them, but you're just kind of over it at this point. You're over it because maybe you're frustrated because you haven't seen anything really develop or transpire within this connection. You're just really looking to move forward. Maybe you don't even want anything to do with this person anymore you know, why you're still drawn to watch a reading perhaps on the connection. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're just kind of confused. You don't really know where you're at, but regardless, you're just looking to move forward. Now, if you watch number two, it doesn't mean that you and this person can never reconnect or that you'll never come back together with this person. It just means that you're in the mind frame of wanting to move forward, whether it's with or without this person. You're just willing to throw you know, destiny and fate into the wind and say, you know what? I make my own fate. I make my own destiny. I'm going to hear, I'm going to be here to take care of myself. And that's what I, that's what I'm doing. So you guys can watch one and two. You guys can watch both of them. However, the messages resonate with you, you guys is how I want you to take them. You know, I get a lot of requests for, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm only one person. I can only do so much. So I just felt guided with the feedback that I've been getting lately, that there's very two two different sets of people out there that are looking for guidance. One of them is number one and you know the rest are number two. So I hope that this uh, suffices for all of that this particular week. So I have a lot of tarot cards. I have a lot of oracle cards. I've always been a tarot card collector. So even before I came onto YouTube and started doing collective readings, I had a lot of decks. I've purchased a lot of decks. Um, when I, of course, started doing readings, a lot of people wanted to donate to my channel. I didn't even have, I think, a PayPal link for the longest time. And I kind of felt uncomfortable with it. I felt uncomfortable just putting it out there. Like, you know, if you guys want to donate, go for it. Uh, if you guys want to send me a gift, okay, here's a link. So all those things came later when I, when I realized that, you know what, some people just want to be able to give back. And so I had to put together some things for that. And so that's why I did that. But I really don't need any more new decks. If somebody wants to gift me something, that's why I do have my my Amazon, um, you know, gift list with Oracle decks and things, because, you know, there's some new ones that are coming out that I'm just like, you know what? Yeah. Okay, fine. I know I have a shit ton of decks, but I really want that deck. There's a new deck right now. I can't remember what it's called, but, and I'm not even going to put it out there because I don't necessarily need it, but I wouldn't mind having that deck. So it is on my, you, you might, my, uh, Amazon list, but I don't necessarily need any more decks. But my point of even bringing this up is because Today I'm using decks, literally, that I haven't given any love or attention to in a while. And there's no reason for it other than the fact that I have too many decks. When I look in my bookshelves and when I look in my, um, you know, my, my cases of, of decks, some, some of them are just not really standing out. And, and as a reader, you tend to go for certain decks all the time. Usually with my Twin Flame specific readings, I used to do the Twin Flame Tuesday. Now I seem to be doing it on Friday. It just seems to be working better um, for my schedule. I do tend to be drawn more towards decks that are specifically designed for Twin Flame connections. So usually I'll be sticking to the same kinds of decks for that type of a reading. But for the Soul Connections reading, I don't know. I just felt guided to use a bunch of decks here today. So you guys are going to be seeing a bunch of decks here today that you probably either never seen me use or that you didn't even know that I had. So everything is going to be listed down below. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of them, like I said, everything will be down below. What else did I want to say? Um, 
I felt like there was something else that I that I needed to say or wanted to say. I can't even remember. You know what? I don't even think that it's that important anymore. Oh, I know what it was. Okay. So over the, not really the weekend, I guess it was Valentine's Day, maybe the day before Valentine's Day, but it really hit me on Valentine's Day. I had a great Valentine's Day, just so you guys know, you know, with my, with my guy, uh, that was great and everything like that. But there was a moment during that day and I definitely had a breakdown and it was just over something that really triggered me. It's very difficult to be a uh, you know person that is somewhat known in the community. And it's very difficult when you have people that are coming at you, wanting something from you, etc. And I think that some of you guys had heard me mention in one of my previous readings that I didn't uh, plan on signing any kind of decks of mine, meaning the Oracle decks that I create, I'm not going to be signing any of them and uh, selling them with my signature on it or anything like that, because there was a little bit of a thing going around that I was doing that. So it was brought to my attention. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm not one to talk about rumors and I'm not one to, you know, create drama or really even hang on to drama and just produce more of it with things that you hear. But, you know, I did see some specific things in um, a message that was about me um, that was very concerning because uh, it was bullshit. <laughs> and you just realize in life that anybody can make up stories about you. Anybody can lie. Why somebody does that blows my mind. I have no freaking idea. I've never been one to straight up make up a lie about someone. Have I been a person to say, you know what, that person's this, this, this person's that because I've had an issue with them? Absolutely. I think we've all done something like that where we've name called, where we've shared our opinion about someone, where we said something nasty when maybe we should have kept it to ourselves. We're all human, right? But to just straight up make up bullshit and lies with things that did not happen, it fucking astounds me absolutely astounds me. So anyways, I unfortunately um, had to be on the receiving end of seeing that something was said about me that was absolutely untrue with somebody that I've never done business with, somebody that's never gotten a reading from me or purchased any of my decks. But people, for whatever reason, if they don't get what they want, they're not getting the response from you that you want, this and that, they can turn around and basically bite you in the ass. And so that's pretty much what happened. And it was just hard. You know, it was hard to be slandered. It was hard to be talked about and to be lied about. And really, you just felt kind of defensive. It's like there was just nothing that you could do about it. So it really did bug me. And I really wasn't going to come on and say anything about it because I just really don't even want to feed any of the drama. But one thing that I don't agree with, and I've seen other people do this, um, nobody I personally know, so let me just put that out there, but I've seen other people, other readers in the community, um, you know, warn other people or talk about other people and this and that. I'm talking about like other readers because they heard something. Well, what I want to say is that whatever you're hearing might be bullshit because the thing is, what was said about me was total, utter bullshit. And so, um, you, you have to be careful with who's coming to you with information. If somebody has an issue with you, if somebody doesn't like you, you know, everybody is, they, they are entitled to their opinion. But again, to go around and say, this person's this, this person's that, they're a bad person, they're just in this business for money, blah, 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 all this other crap. Let me tell you something, if I was in this business for money, there would be a hell of a lot of other things that I would be doing um, that I'm just, I either A, don't have time for or energetically just don't feel it. So <laughs> there's just all kinds of things that absolutely that I could be campaigning myself and making a shit ton of money and I'm just not really interested in it. So the thing is, again, at the end of the day, everybody is entitled to their opinion. That's totally fine. But I guess I'm just kind of trying to put this out there to maybe other readers. When you hear things, I mean, you got to base things on your own experience. If you haven't had a bad experience with somebody, don't be so quick just to take somebody else's opinion because they've had a bad experience with this person. Maybe something triggered them. Maybe there's something within them. I mean, I've had issues, you guys, with other people in this community. But the thing is, that doesn't make these people bad people. It doesn't. It just means that there's something that was triggered within me 
And maybe that's something that I need to work on. And so rather than running around and basically, you know, spreading gossip and, and slandering people's names and, and trying to influence other people not to like this person because I had an issue with them is just bullshit. So, you know, again, we're all human. We've all talked some shit, but at the end of the day, Again, just like, let's just try to stay in our own lane. And that's what pisses me off more than anything. I thought I was in my own fucking lane. I really did. I thought I was in my own lane, minding my own business, having a great day. And then just like, bam, all of a sudden I read this and I'm just like, holy crap. I cannot believe the lie. I can't believe the bullshit (laughs) that I'm seeing. And I really felt the need to like defend myself. Like, look, here's the screenshots. Oh my God, this did not happen. Blah, 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 this and that. But hey, you know, we, we all, it's very natural for us to want to defend ourselves. But at the end of the day, whatever you're really focusing on, dwelling on, getting upset, all this other stuff for a period of time, like I could react to it. Yes, it happened. It pisses me off. It's irritating. As much as I wanted to lash back out, as much as I wanted to basically just flip out, I stopped myself because why am I going to give this situation attention that it doesn't even deserve? At the end of the day, it's meaningless. At the end of the day, it means nothing. It's not true. It doesn't matter. Even if, even if it affects me in a negative way because somebody decides to go off the freaking Richter scale, which I do have to question sanity here, um, there is nothing I can do about it. It just is what it is. So I just wanted to share that, um, my little experience. And also I wanted to let you guys know on a different note that I decided to do a sexy little reading the other day. Now, when I had originally done it, I felt nervous about posting it because I normally don't post things like that. I normally don't post um, messages that are that risque. Now, I'm a very sexual person. I'm very open, um, and I don't mean open sexually. I'm definitely into committed relationships and things like that, so I don't mean it like that. And not that there's anything wrong with people that are into that sort of thing, but I just want to put it out there. Definitely very old-fashioned. I didn't always used to be, but within these last 10 years, I've definitely changed. So. Um, but what I want to say about that is I was a little nervous about posting it. And there was a reason because I knew that a, it was going to be immediately demonetized, which it was, which whatever, it's no big deal. So I'm not making money off of those ads. So what, but it was just like the principle of it. Like it it was immediately demonetized and my comments were disabled. What? That's never happened before. The only time that I have disabled comments, I think was on a a video or two that I have done in the past where I was like talking about some real controversial things and it was just not a reading. It was just, I think, I I can't even remember. I swear my memory is not that good anymore. But it was just on something that I was talking about. Like I didn't want feedback. It was just, this is my statement. Here you go. Don't want to hear the feedback, blah, blah, blah. But this was a reading. I mean, there was no reason that I would have disabled the comments. So the only reason that I noticed that it was disabled is because someone brought it to my attention and I was like, what? So I went in there and sure enough, the, the, the uh, comments were disabled. So of course I'm reading and I'm just like, you know, can this platform do this? Yes, they can. I'm not saying that they did, but I'm just kind of like, what the hell? There's no other explanation. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting how, um, (laughs) you know, anybody can say what they want to say about all kinds of subjects, but man, you know, when you talk about sex, it seems to be a, a major issue and it's one of the most natural things that um, all human beings deal with is is that. So whatever. I mean, we're very, <laughs> I'm not even going to go into it, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. So I just wanted to clear that up. I did not disable the comments, not me, but I went ahead and uh, re- reinstated it, opened it back up. Um, and it seems to be fine now, but moving forward, I'm not sure that I'm going to do a lot of readings like that because it's just, there are other readers out there. Um, some other amazing, I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, call out two right now. Fire Witch Tarot is one and Angelic Revelation 144. Those are the two readers that I personally, um, know and have their decks that are just rocking it in that field. You know, I did 
in the when I first got back from the retreat that I had done last, I think it was March. Yeah. I was really inspired to do all kinds of things. Um, and one of them was to do an erotic deck. But the thing is, when you have an idea, sometimes other people also have those ideas and they execute them before you. And the way that I look at that is, you know what? It just wasn't meant to be for me. So I have um, come out with, you know, different, I have this new oracle that's coming out. It's not at all erotic whatsoever, but I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, people that are good at certain things, I'm just going to basically let them be those people, you know, that are doing those types of creations. It's just not a part of me, I guess. It's just not really my thing. So I enjoy using their decks for, for those purposes and bringing those messages to you guys that are really racy and really deep on those levels. But as far as me coming out with my own erotic deck, I would love to, but again, I just don't think it's something that I would use all the time. And, um, I did get flagged on Instagram, you guys. This is ridiculous because there are other accounts that really post, I mean, we're talking like pornographic stuff and they're not getting flagged. So I got a couple of haters out there that anytime I post anything that seems to be a little risque, I'm getting flagged and they're taking down my post. And the last thing that I want to do is anything to happen to my channel to where all of a sudden they take down my channel or they just, you know, I, I don't want that. So I'm kind of treading lightly when it comes to sexual content on my channel because I don't want to cross any lines and I don't want to have any issues with my channel because I've worked very hard to, to build the platform that I have today. So that's what I'm saying, you guys. I feel like I'm just going to go ahead and hand that off to other people that are creating those decks. They're amazing at it. They're brilliant at it. Keep on rocking it. But me, I'm just kind of like, mm, I think I'm just going to hold hold off and not do something like that. It's just not meant for me. So I'm just explaining that to you guys because you guys wanted to like see more of that. You probably aren't going to see a lot of those types of readings, but I just felt inclined to do it because it was Valentine's week and I just wanted to bring a lot of variety to the, um, you know, to the collective on Valentine's week. So yeah, I feel like that's all that I had to say. So I know that was a lot. That was 17 minutes worth of me talking, but I of course will put a timestamp down below so you guys don't even have to listen to that crap if you didn't want to. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get started and we're going to focus on the soul connection for those of you that are choosing number one, this is the eclipse here, Organite, and it's going to be representing the connection that you're currently in separation or challenge with, but one that you would like to perhaps come back together with someday. Okay, that's like your goal. So let's put this aside and let's get into these decks. So as I shuffle, excuse me, each deck, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know what I'm using. So I've decided for, this is a deck. I freaking love this deck, you guys. This is the El Goliath Tarot. Freaking brilliant, amazing artist. Love him. Um, so yeah, this is his tarot deck and it's a beautiful deck. Why don't I grab it more? I don't know. It's just been one of those things where it's just been kind of hiding in the back and I just haven't grabbed it, but I freaking love it. So this is the El Goliath Tarot and we're going to basically see what the energy is of just you even coming into this reading today, okay? What is the energy of why you're coming to this reading today? Let's take a look. And I, and I have chosen an oracle to go with each tarot deck because I love doing that. This one is called the Animal Kin oracle and the reason that i chose this one to go with this deck is because el goliath has create i mean they're all animals he works with spirit animals so that is just made sense to me so i'm going to grab an oracle card and we're going to clarify with tarot what is the energy that we're coming into this reading today we have the energy of foundation a jabaru not sure if i'm saying that right but look at how beautiful that card is that looks like a stork to me but it's probably not or maybe a pelican. I don't know. So let's go ahead and get the message here when we come, when it comes to foundation. Okay. So this right here is the sun's energy. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Well, this to me, the sun immediately is masculine energy. So it might be that right now, 
the masculine's energy, the masculine's foundation is currently being established or worked upon at this particular time. So I feel like that is a message about the the masculine energy in this connection, the foundation. This is perhaps setting the tone of the connection right now. So if some of you guys are feminine watching this video and you're perhaps waiting on your masculine to make some sort of changes, I feel like that foundation is being worked upon at this particular time. Now, of course, the sun is about happiness. The sun is about the energy of life. It says the beams of life. We have all of these sunflowers in this field. We also have this bear here. So we do have to consider when we're working with um, decks that have animals in it, these animals may have specific messages for you guys out there, okay? So make sure to look that up if you want to and even sunflower okay but for me what i'm getting from this is that the beams of life the life of this connection the foundation here the foundation has already been established the foundation has already been laid down so there is a foundation of this connection what do we do now okay how do we build upon this foundation let's get some more messages wisdom sloth wow when I saw this deck, I was like, I got to have it. I got to have it. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Seven of Wands. Okay, so when it comes to wisdom, Seven of Wands, it says the determined otter. So we do know that the Seven of Wands, you guys, is a card where somebody is got their defenses up. It's a card of fighting for something as well. Really feeling like you have to fight. Maybe there has been a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, challenges with your person. Maybe the masculine energy in this connection has created a lot of issues. But the thing is, it's not, we're not blaming the masculine. If you're a feminine, it could be your own masculine energy within yourself. There's something to learn here, though, with the energy of sloth, wisdom. There's something to learn with what's not working right now. Whatever challenges that are presenting themselves are presenting a lesson. They're presenting some sort of hidden wisdom. So this is like the determined otter. This otter is determined to figure something out here. Figure it, it determined to, you know, become stronger, you know, to fight through all the negativity or to fight through whatever, just whatever is robbing us of our sun the beams of life, our happiness, our good times, our positive energy. So it's been a struggle is what I'm getting here. So that's the foundation of this reading today is it's been a real struggle. It's been a real str struggle to, to obtain the lessons and to obtain the wisdom that's being presented to you from this connection because of all the struggles that you have undergone. That's what I, that's what I see here. All right, one last message and then we'll move forward. Praying mantis, patience. I'm getting here that it's been a very difficult lesson in patience, man. I mean, if you think about it, patience is one of the hardest lessons of all. Because the thing is, sometimes what we want when we want it, it's just not, not, not the right time. Divine timing plays a role in all things, and that's very difficult. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Ten of Swords. Painful lesson, you guys. So with this Ten of Swords here, it says the barren desert. Feels like that desert or that desert is all dried up. Look at all those dead crows just laying there, ravens even. Okay. Is that the same thing? I don't know. Um, but this is definitely an energy here where things may have been not moving or progressing forward for a period of time. Maybe you feel like there's no hope. Maybe you feel like I don't know if I can even learn this lesson of patience. I don't even think that I know if this is something that I'm ever going to survive from. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick myself off the ground. I just feel dead at this time. So with the Ten of Swords, sometimes things happen for a reason, even if they're painful. Sometimes what we want, we don't get for a reason. So again, you guys, there is some sort of a lesson, but it has come through pain. Ten of Swords is always an energy of pain. Always. 
it threatens our life in a way. It threatens our livelihood. It threatens our life force, which is the sun's energy. We feel, you know, we, we just, we feel defeated with the 10 of swords. So it's been hard. It's been a challenge. But what I'm getting for this opening message, you guys, are you up for this challenge? Are you up for it? So sometimes people say that certain journeys are not for the faint hearted. What I'm getting in this reading here today is confirming you're not faint hearted. This lesson <laughs> is here to teach you something. It's really here to teach you something about positive energy, positive thinking. It's here to teach you something about you know, the wisdom that it takes in order to learn this less necessary lesson of patience. This is about becoming stronger, building your foundation. So it's about really building a solid foundation for yourself to where when shit like this happens in life, because it does, whether you're staying in your own lane or not, it seems like things just happen sometimes. Bad things happen to good people. It just happens. That's a book. So Rather than saying, oh my God, it's so unfair. Life is so unfair. This is bullshit, which again, I have my moment on Valentine's Day where it's just, I don't understand. It's not fair. I could sit there all day long in that energy or I can pick my ass up off the floor, which I had to do, and resume and move forward with my life because shitty things are going to happen. They're just going to happen. How we deal with it, that takes wisdom. That takes time. You get it? There's a reason that I went into all the things that I did today. So sometimes I don't want to do that because I don't want people to start off on a negative note with the reading by bringing in my own energy and by bringing in my own um, you know, experiences. But sometimes spirit guides me to do it because there is some sort of a clarification of a message that's going to come through here today. And here it is. Okay. So we can defend ourselves. We can become stronger in putting up healthy boundaries. But when we're allowing what's happening to us in life to rob us of our life's force, to, to rob us of our happiness and our joy, to just destroy everything that we've built, that's when the lesson is not being learned. That's when we're failing at the lesson. So things take time. So even if you've fallen down, get back up. It's okay. The praying mantis says, have patience with yourself. You're not going to learn everything immediately. Just because you learned a lesson before or went through something perhaps with this person doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes in the future, but it's all about progression. Things take time. So give yourselves a break if you have fallen down. Give yourselves a break if you have succumbed to this energy once again. This is helping you to establish healthy boundaries within yourself as a person. It's helping you to establish the foundation of who you are. And I'm also getting that it's helping you to, to establish a, found, a stronger foundation for this connection. So certain things had to happen for a freaking reason. Wow, that is beautiful and deep. This is going to be a very long and um, involved and deep reading because I haven't even gone into number two yet. Let's see. So let's take a look and, uh, you know, just for uh, curiosity's sake, what's going on with your person? What's going on with them? What's happening in your person's world right now on their journey? So this right here is called the, what is this called? Voice of the Trees, Voice of the Trees Oracle. So let's go ahead and just grab some cards. We're going to do, this is their mental state currently. This is their emotional state currently. This is their physical world, outer circumstances, and this is their soul, higher self energy. So let's just clarify now with some tarot. This one is called the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. I decided to use a little cloth today. I'm not loving it because it's moving around now. But whatever, it's too late. Okay, mental space for your person. Where are they at right now? Okay, so we have the energy here of the apple choice healing. So the apple, of course, is a dual message here. There's choices that people need to make, and there's also energy of healing. Or maybe people are dealing with the choices that they have made. 
We have the seven of spells. Wow. Okay, so for this particular deck, you guys, because I don't use it often, I'm going to make sure that I have the suits correct. The, uh, the spells to me might be either wands, because that is creation, but maybe I'm wrong. Hold on for a second here, you guys. The spells, let me just get it. Okay. Sorry, you guys, I just, I should have looked this up before I used this deck, but when you have so many decks like this, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to know what suits go with what. Okay, so what I'm getting here is I feel, hold on, two of spells. Visions would be, um, I believe, water. Boons are... I just can't figure it out. I'm pretty sure you guys that the spells are wands and the boons are are um, pentacles. Three of spells. Yes, the spells, you guys, are wands. Fire. Ugh. I hate that I didn't do that ahead of time. Sorry. Just wanted to get the, <laughs> the message correct. Seven of spells. Seven of wands. The card is a double confirmation of a message here. Look at this. Seven of Wands already came up. It's coming up again. It's coming up again. So if you guys are dealing with a masculine, okay, which obviously this is your person, okay, uh, could be the masculine, maybe you're a masculine watching this for a feminine, that could resonate as well. But I am getting more of an energy here for masculines that you're watching this video for because it just came up with the sun. I always relate the sun to the masculine. This right here is telling me here that people have to make choices. People may be putting their guard up in this connection right now, okay? They might be putting their guard up right now while they obtain some sort of wisdom in order to heal, to make better choices later on. So if this seems to be where your connection is currently at, where it's not really progressing, it's not really moving forward in the physical world, just know that your person is in this energy here of weighing the pros and cons, trying to figure out the choices that they want to make moving forward. That's what I'm seeing here. And they might have their defenses up while they're doing this. So this is about patience and while people take the time that they need in order to heal that's what i see so let's get another card here for their heart space we have passion and strength so you can see two people on this card here with a masculine and a feminine facing each other and we have a child of spells. This is the page of wands. So the page of wands, you guys, I should have known that it was wands. There's the freaking wand right there. Um, the page of wands is an energy here of um, creation. It's also a, a card where we're looking at life from a child's perspective, kind of like we have a new set of glasses on. We're seeing things in a whole new way. We're asking questions. We're discovering. We're learning. So I feel like when it comes to your person's heart space right now, they might have a renewed sense of passion. There could be things that they're really focusing and concentrating on right now when it comes to new creations and new ideas and just new ways of doing things. Maybe they have a lot of success right now when it comes to their career or they have a lot of creative suits, I mean, creative pursuits in, in the, you know, uh, or a lot of coals in the fire or something like that. But they're finding strength through, through learning. They're finding strength through taking this time that they need for themselves. So I do feel like if you guys are in separation with somebody or you're experiencing challenges with them and you're wanting to come towards them, but they're really resisting it, that is because they're, they're needing to take some time for themselves. That is what I'm getting from this. This is the environment. We have Oracle and we also have Teacher. So this is like circumstances that are outside of ourselves. And we have the Child of Challenges, which is the Page of Swords. What's really um, kind of interesting, which is my favorite word to say, this is an energy that's talking about an Oracle and we have Page of Swords. A lot of people see Page of Swords as social media stalking or or spying on someone. We're spying on someone through this oracle today. <clears throat> We're spying into somebody's energy today through this freaking reading. <laughs> so that's what's happening here. 
your person, it, what's going on in their world can be picked up upon this oracle. So it doesn't mean that you're going to invade their privacy or violate their privacy. I believe as readers, we can only tap in so far. We cannot tap in and read their minds. We can't tap into their energy 100% because again, that's taking away another person's free will and really violating their privacy. We're literally just kind of chipping the tip of the iceberg, right? So this to me is telling us that whatever is happening in your person's world, you might know. But I'm also getting for some of you, and this might surprise some of you, that your person is maybe perhaps open to looking to see what's going on with you through social media. Now, I'm not seeing, I mean, I'm not saying that they're consulting psychics, even though some of them could be, but I do feel like that's their way of checking in on you is through social media. This is happening. That's happening. And they might be thinking about you as well. They might be relying on other people in the environment to ask, and they're asking questions about you to kind of get information on you. That's coming through the reading today. I don't know why. Soul energy, delight, awe. Look at that. A masculine and a feminine. Maybe it's just two feminines. I don't even know. It doesn't even matter. It's two people. Two people in delightful energy. But we do have the five of pentacles. Boons. Yeah, so I was correct. Well, I... I mean, it made sense. There's a wand, but this is definitely pentacles. Five of pentacles is out in the cold. Here it is. Just to confirm here. Five of pentacles feeling left out in the cold, feeling shunned, feeling like the door's been closed. So what does it do? It takes away this feeling of connection. It takes away this feeling of delight. So people do feel alone. People do feel the energy of disconnect. Your person feels this. Your person feels disconnected from you energetically. And that might be one of the reasons why they are looking in or trying to gain in information about you in this connection right now. Because they feel disconnected. Even though, yes, it looks like they're experiencing some passion and some strength within their um, own life, I do feel like they are feeling a disconnect from you, most definitely. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go into another deck that's going to go into how your person's energy is towards you at this time. So you guys, because I wasn't feeling drawn to use any kind of messages decks today, you know, the messages that, you know, your person has this to say to you, we're just going to be going about it a little bit differently. What is your person's feelings or just energy towards you at this particular time? What's going on? So we're going to go into this deck right here, which is called the new era, the new era elements tarot. What is your person's energy towards you at this time? What is your person's energy towards you at this time? We have the mother of water, which is the queen of cups. So I definitely get you guys with this one. Your person is feeling your energy. They're feeling your energy. They may be um, wanting this very, th this beautiful queen of cups energy. Now, again, we did just get done with the message that your person may be pushing you away. They might be trying to defend themselves. They might be trying to conjure up the strength perhaps to get through certain challenges within this connection. But at the end of the day, they do feel you. They feel the energy that you're sending to them. They feel this deep bond with you. That's what I'm getting. At the end of the day, they do feel a deep bond with you. Conscious connections. Yeah, they definitely are conscious of your connection. Look at that. I mean, that's a dead giveaway right there to me. They feel really good in your energy. But again, that might confuse you because their actions or even their words are going completely in the opposite direction. How can this person feel me on this deep level, but they're pushing me away in the physical world? People are people. People are confusing. <laughs> Human beings are very complex individuals. So we're not always conscious of what we're doing, but your person is conscious of this connection. They know that they feel something special with you. They know that there's something going on. They know that there's an emotional connection. Now they may not be able to understand the depth of it, but they are conscious that there is some kind of a connection or a pull towards your energy that they have with you. Mother of water. Now, they might feel a mothering energy from you, and that could trigger some of them, especially if they have issues with their mother. Could be. 
So you might remind them of this energy. You might be nurturing, very nurturing, very loving, very giving. Who wouldn't want that, right? Well, somebody that's fucked up might not want it. Somebody that had a, an issue with their mother, their upbringing, have, you know, all, all these types of issues that may not feel that, that just may not feel ready for them or right for them. They might not feel ready for that because they haven't healed. We already know that your person right now is working on healing mentally. And we have that came up with the seven of wands. Their defenses are up because they're still needing to heal some sort of issue but they're consciously connected to you. They feel your energy. It's, it's like they want your cup, they want your love, but they're pushing it away. So that's your person's energy towards you, you guys right now. This right here, I forgot to tell you, is the Sacred Rebels Oracle. Beautiful, love it. So let's see what your energy is towards them, okay? What's, what, what, what are your, what's your energy towards them? Oh, this one wanted to come out. We have the devil's energy, holy crap. <laughs> All right, the devil's energy. So let's see why. Why is this devil's energy here? Why do you have the devil's energy towards your person? Really? Okay, you're trying to release negative energies that you have tied up with your person. You are. You're trying to release any kind of um, toxicity, any kind of codependency you may have with them. Anything that is making you feel low vibrational, any obsessive thinking, anything that you have that's connected to them that is of a lower vibrational nature, you're trying to release that. You, you really are. You're trying to release that at this time. That's how I see this card. The way that I use oracles, you guys, and this is another thing. Um, when I use cards, um, when it comes to tarot, I always stick to the uh, message because I respect the tarot. It's a, it's a, a system that's been put in place. W cards mean specific things. But when it comes to oracle, oracles are oracles. Oracles are meant to be used intuitively. It doesn't mean you have to use them intuitively. You can use this and follow the guidelines and look at the book and all that other stuff and get your messages. You know, but really oracle is meant to expand your mind, which is one of the reasons you guys that I don't have booklets and, and PDF files that go with my um, Oracle decks because I want to push the person that's using them to really open up their own minds and trust their own intuition. That's why I always want you guys to trust your own intuition even over everything that I tell you in this reading. If you're getting something else, go with that always. So yeah, anyways, my point is, is that there was, I think, a message the other day that I had brought forth to the collective, and it was like one of these uh, cards that had a meaning on the top, and then on the reversed, it said something else. Well, I took the message that came through, but on the bottom, when I read that, read the word, it just prompted me. It prompted a intuitive response in me. I wasn't reading the definition of the of the word. I know what unrequited love means. I'm not a fucking idiot. But the thing is, somebody felt the need to like correct me and it was just really rude and ridiculous. And I'm just kind of like, I don't think I'm doing harm to the collective by bringing forth a message intuitively off of a word that I saw. So it wasn't the actual card. It wasn't the actual message. It was what I intuitively got, which was somebody's not over you. That's what I got. Unrequited love, let me just make it clear, it is a love that is not reciprocated. Got it, know it. But the thing is, what you intuitively get off of something doesn't necessarily make it wrong. So releasing allegiances, this could be something specific for some of you, but I'm not getting that from this card. I am getting that you're releasing the devil's energy. You're releasing anything that's tied up. These flies here that are on this woman, they're feeding off of her. This right here to me is there's something for them to feed off of. When we release the devil's energy, we're no longer giving something negative power. Kind of like me mentioning this stupid crap today in today's reading. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, spirit. All right. So we're releasing all of this need, this, this attachment to this person. Any lower vibrational energies we're releasing. And I love that. So that's what you're working on. It's great. So now let's go ahead and get some energies here of like where the connection is at currently in its growth cycle. Uh, just where the connection's at, where the, where the relationship is at. What's going on here? So this is a deck. I 
never use. It is called the Santa Merte, and I'm probably not saying it right, tarot. Santa Merte tarot. And you would think I would be all about it because it's got skulls on it. It's kind of dark and shadowy, but I just never pick it up. So here we go. Queen of Swords. Gotta love it, right? Queen of Swords is always coming up in my readings. Queen of Swords energy. Queen of Swords gets a bad rap. She doesn't always have to be, you know, detached, but sometimes that can be a very positive energy. Just depends on what the Queen of Swords is working with. So let's get it. This right here is called the Mind, Spirit, and Body um, Oracle. This has two, two things, so I'm going to read both of them. Healthy self-esteem. So this Queen of Swords, if this is you or the feminine in the situation, this is your energy. The Queen of Swords is adapting a healthy mindset. Healthy self-esteem tells her love, humor, charisma, and creative and intellectual abilities attract loving and nurturing relationships to her. Look at that. Okay. What is the negative side here? People usually find me unattractive and uninteresting. Well, let me tell you something. My entire life I've battled with this because I'm a pretty intense, serious kind of a person. I don't like to fuck around. I don't like small talk. I don't like things that aren't deep. I don't like surface relationships or friendships. So basically, if you're in my circle, I'm 100% invested. So to me, people that are not in that energy that want just surface energy, you know, surface crap, surface connections, surface relationships, I just, I don't find that interesting and I'm not drawn to give it really the time of day. And so people will find me uninteresting and unattractive. Maybe because I'm so serious. Maybe because I take life seriously. Maybe I shouldn't all the time, but this energy can be very abrupt for people. My, um, just deliberate, like, you know, this is the way that it is. That is unattractive to some people. I've turned off a lot of men in my life because I'm extremely masculine and I'm not masculine looking, but I'm extremely masculine in my energy, you know, where I will take control of the situation and I will, I will do what I need to do in order to get things done and get things handled. So when I have a person in my life, that's not able to, in a way, dominate my energy or override my energy, I can somehow, I can sometimes lose respect and I can sometimes just become that person becomes unattractive to me. So I understand why somebody would feel this way about me. Doesn't make it wrong or right. We're all different. So anyways, I'm bringing this in today because I feel that maybe sometimes the queen of swords can get a bad rap. Sometimes the queen of swords is unpopular. You guys, sometimes the queen of swords can be somebody who's just cutting herself away from even having fun because she doesn't want to deal with the bullshit. <laughs> but what I want to see here what I want you guys to see here is you can be a healthy queen of swords. You can, you can still be love loving. You can still find humor in situations. You can be charismatic. You can be creative. You know, you can attract loving and nurturing relationships to you while being in the queen of swords energy. The queen of swords just basically has her sword up and she's going to let certain people in and she's not going to let other things in because she has healthy boundaries, but she's not cutting everybody's heads off. Sometimes we can be in that mode and sometimes we need to be in that mode in certain situations. But with our everyday lives, we don't got to be cutting off heads. <laughs> we can be in this healthy energy here of saying, you know what? I just love myself. I have standards. I have boundaries and I love myself. And you know what? No, nope, that's, I'm sorry. That's not going to work for me, but I'm not going to say no to everything and chop every good thing off in my life because I need to be the hard queen of swords. So there's a message here, you guys. There's a message here for what's happening right now in this connection. You can be a lovely uh, queen of swords. You can. So let's just say if the masculine can't handle that, that might be a part of the masculine's lesson to level up with you and to embrace the strong woman or feminine, I should say, that you are. The queen that you are. So... It's some kind of a lesson perhaps that the masculine needs to learn. If he's not strong enough to face you or to approach you or to be by your side, he's got some healing to do. That's it. That's it. That's, that's the message. What else is happening here? Well, here we go. We have the eight of pentacles. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, you guys. It's the 
uh, what is that? I cannot read. Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is a, a, a double, uh, like a, a repeat. Repeat card, if I can talk. A repeat card. Why is it coming up again? Because somebody feels shut out in the cold. That's why. The, this Queen of Swords, she probably, <laughs> let's face it, maybe you cut something out. Maybe you shut the door on this masculine, perhaps. Maybe you loved yourself too much and you said, I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. You've done something, though. Something has happened. It could be, though, that the masculine has shut the door on you and forced you to go into this self-perseverance mode to look at yourself, to gain more self-esteem. So again, sometimes those painful lessons and the things do not happen for us, Ten of Swords, are necessary stepping stones to get into this very empowered energy. Healthy love. Oh, wow. Okay. For good and for bad, and in sickness and in health, I love myself and others unconditionally. So let's face it. You're here watching this reading today because you love this person still. You love this person. You can't help it. You just do. But you love yourself too. And you know it's got to be equal. You can't just love this person and not love yourself. Again, this has forced people to have to love themselves more. Love is blind. If I love someone, I tend to put them on a pedestal. See only their gifts and talents and put a blind eye to their difficult side. We've done this. We've done this with this person because we love them so much because they're everything that we want. But the thing is, that's very imbalanced behavior. It's not healthy. So this five of pentacles is reminding us that while this door is closed, we can get healthy. And the healthier that we are, the healthier this love, this connection can be. Do you see? It's amazing. Just amazing. Two want to come out for some reason. They just do. We got the moon and we got the two of wands. Whew. The moon and the two of wands. Whenever the moon comes out, you know, you guys could be dealing with a, a cancer or a Pisces. There could be something about that season. We're going into Pisces season very soon here. So there could be something going on. Healthy body. I feel secure and safe in the world. I have multiple families who help me feel like I belong and I am supported and have a say. The moon is about confusing energies. The two of wands is about the you know inability to make, well, it's not like the two of swords. We have to make maybe some sort of decision, but you can see this person, it looks very two of swords to me, which is why I'm saying that. We're having a difficult time perhaps, or people are having a difficult time making decisions. Maybe they feel lost. Maybe they feel confused, dazed and confused right now on this journey with what's happening here. So guess what? This message comes in and saves today and says, you're safe and secure in the world. You're not lost. You have multiple families who are helping you to feel like you are loved and supported. You're, the moon is your own fears. The moon is what your subconscious is telling you. It's not true. Sometimes the moon can be lies and deception, the lies that we tell ourselves, the illusions that we're getting caught up in. It's only an illusion, perhaps, that you and this person are even separated. It's, it's an illusion that you're not safe, that you're alone. You're not alone. So don't let that stop you from moving forward with your life. It says, my immune system, bones and joints are weak and vulnerable. I am weak. I am vulnerable. I am broken. No, you're not. You're not. You have been given this healthy body in this 3D world, in this existence, to be able to pick yourself up and move forward regardless of what's happening here, regardless of this door being closed right now. It is okay. There is something to learn here. There is a valuable lesson in all of this for you, but you've got to love yourself more at the end of the day. There's no other way around it, period. All right, you guys. So... That is the energy of the connection right now. The door seems to be closed. People seem to be in a state of fear, not knowing what the hell is going on. But this gives us a great opportunity to be healthier in our body and in our mind. Look at that. 
It's amazing. And what's interesting with these cards, you guys, is that they all have different suits. So we have this healthy energy, right? But then we also have, you know, anger, sadness. There's all kinds of different suits. So I think it's interesting that it came through with all these healthier alternatives, the healthier alternative that we can take during a period of either separation or confusion or things seem to not be progressing at this time. It's up to us on how we're going to heal and move forward in the best way that we can. So let's now go into this energy here of, I think we're just going to, um, we're going to end it up here. That's what I'm feeling. Let's just see how we're, how we're at, what, how things are just kind of unfolding and concluding. Okay. As we continue to move forward on this journey, as we continue to put one foot in front of the other, what, what happens with this connection? Where are we at perhaps in the future? Where are things leading? This right here was a beautiful deck that I've never used before that was gifted to me by a fan on YouTube. I just want to say thank you so much if you're watching. It is a really amazing deck. It's called the Affirmators, Aff Affirma Affirmators <laughs> Tarot. And this is the same people that create the affirmative decks, the Affirm Affirminators decks. So I just, when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is so cute. And I put it on my wish list and somebody made it happen. So thank you so much. So let's see what happens when we just continue to move forward and do the work that we need to do. What is this energy here? What is the energy for your person? I feel like that's something that you guys want to know. What is your person's energy? You know, what is the possible actions or their energy just in the future towards you in this connection? We have rest. I really, again, I'm getting this, this message here that your person is still in that healing and recovery mode. I know we hear this all the time. I know you guys are sick and tired of hearing it, but it is what it is. You know, again, patience is virtue. Remember, that was one of the first messages that came through. Patience, wisdom, healing, recovery. Nine of Cups. I do see the Nine of Cups as a card of self. Yes, it's a wishes fulfilled card, but I really feel like this. there's only one person on that card usually, and that's because it's about your own desires, filling your own cups at this time. This person needs to rest. They need to take a step away from whatever is stressing them out. So I'm going to read this because there could be something special for some of you out there with some message that you need to know. With the Seven of Wands coming up two times, the seven of wands is kind of like when you've backed someone into a corner. You may not have meant to do that. That could even be you though, feeling backed in a corner. When we feel backed in a corner, sometimes we lash out. Sometimes we just can't handle anything anymore. So we run, we ghost, we stop talking to someone, we cut them off. We can't deal with it any longer. That is the energy that I feel your person's in. It says, I take a step away from my stress and then a deep breath. And then a crankiness killing nap. A person might be cranky right now. When I get the rest I need instantly, I become a better version of myself, able to navigate complex relationships in a single bound. When I don't, I'm not, which means I shouldn't, but I try to, and then we can't, and it doesn't, but I did, so it wasn't. Ugh, good night. So that kind of conversation is what your person might be feeling right now. If you're getting mixed signals with, for them or with them, Take a step back. Leave them alone. I'm getting here that if you guys are actively pursuing your person by sending them messages or trying to engage with them and you're just really not getting met with, with anything, it's, it's a sign to step away. Give them some space. Let them figure out what's going to make them happy first. If somebody doesn't know how to make themselves happy, they're sure as hell not going to know how to make you happy. So you've got to let that happen. So that is your person's energy in the future. And it doesn't mean like the future forever. Just right now. It's okay because you know what? It looks to me with the cards that came through, that, you know, there's some things that we need to do too. So what is your person or what's your energy here towards your person in the future? Humility. I take a deep breath and I release all of my desires to be right. Oh my God. <laughs> 
It says, without right, what's left? A soft and pliable version of me that's willing to make mistakes, hear other people's opinions, and try doing stuff a different way. In other words, I get to take a pretty sweet, all-inclusive brain vacation. See, look at you. You're like, hey, you know what? This is going to give me an opportunity to take some much-needed time for myself. Figure out what I want. You know, examine me, heal me. So I really feel this week, you guys, which is always constantly shifting and changing just because the energy is like this now doesn't mean it'll be this way next week. So this right here, it gives you an opportunity to just sit down, chill out, recollect your thoughts, take some rest as well, and, you know, make better decisions later. We have the, oh my God. See, Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is the third card that is a repeat here. We got the Seven of Wands repeat. We got another card, uh, Five of Pentacles repeat in this reading, and we also now have the Ten of Swords repeated. Those cards, for some reason, are significant in this reading today. So the Ten of Swords means something is like, it doesn't mean it's dead, but it means let it lie. Things are not moving forward right now for a reason. It's okay, okay? It's time to take a little bit of a rest, recuperate. Let them do their thing, you do their thing. It's all good. So we're going to get one last closing message from spirit here, okay? Remember, guys, we can lay down and die or we can take a vacation. What do you want to do? I'd rather take a vacation. Last message that spirit has for people that chose group number one when it comes to this whole situation, this journey, this connection, everything. We have ownership. So spirit wants to remind us when it comes to ownership, there's a special message here. I take ownership for how I make others feel and I do my part to repair any bridges I might have burned for perhaps even lightly or even lightly singed. If bridge mending feels impossible, then I can start small. Instead of becoming a bridge architect, maybe I'll just skip the bridge and walk the long way around. Taking ownership is great for burning calories. God, I love this deck. It's just su such, such a wisdom-filled deck. Ownership. Let's clarify ownership. What's going on here? Page of Swords, another double confirmation. What we're thinking, what we're doing, how... This is about thinking before you speak. This is about thinking before you do anything. And I'm always working on this. So... I, I take ownership of that. I'm not always making the, the, the best decisions. Sometimes I fly off the handle and I'm just like, why? Why did I even say that? Why did I even respond in this way? God. <laughs> so that message is definitely for me too at the very end. Page of Swords. Take ownership for the things that you want to say, the things that you should say, and the things that you did say. Think before you speak. Is it absolutely necessary to share everything that you're thinking? No. And sometimes even me. I'm like, why did I share that? And when I started this reading, I did share a lot. And I always feel vulnerable when I share stuff because I just feel vulnerable. And I feel like people are going to judge me with the, with the way that I say things or the way that I think. It is what it is. Okay. I got to take ownership for it. That's how I feel. That's what I wanted to. That's what I wanted to express. That's what I wanted to let you guys know. Maybe, maybe that will help someone out there today. I got to own it, even though it feels uncomfortable. Even though I might not want to post this video, but I'm gonna. I got to take ownership for this. So, page of swords. It just comes down to what you do and what you don't do, and there's consequences, and they don't always have to be bad. But there's effects and things that happen whenever we do things. So we've got to take ownership for what we're thinking. No one is responsible for what we're thinking. This is very common. They're making me feel this way. Well, they're triggering this response within you, but you're the person that is wallowing in that feeling. No one is holding a gun to your head and making you feel that way. You're allowing this situation to make you feel this way. You can either learn something from it. Look at all those books on that card. And you can say to your thought, thanks for sharing, and then cut it away. Cut away from the negative energy, the negative feeling. But we got to take ownership on how we make other people feel and how others 
or perhaps are making us feel a certain way, but again, at the end of the day, making us feel something for a reason, let's clear it away. We don't have to continue to allow ourselves to feel a certain way just because we were triggered. That is the ending message here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Maybe it resonated for you this week. Maybe it didn't. It's okay. I bring forward messages every single week. So let's go ahead and get into the next portion of this reading. All right, you guys, so if you chose number two or this honeybee honeycomb organite, number two is going to be for those that are, you know, kind of not necessarily at the tail end of this journey, but you're not really focused on this other person so much. You're really more or less focused on your own healing and how to progress and move forward just in general. So we're going to go into some different decks and just kind of see what the current vibe, so like what's your current vibe, what's your current energy come into this reading? What's the situation? What's going on? Let's get it. So we're going to go into this in cat inspiration oracle that I never use, but it's such a cute deck. Never use this, but it's such a cute deck. And of course, I'm going to pair it up with this mystical cats oracle. Nope, mystical cats tarot. That's what it is, mystical cats tarot. What's bringing the viewers that chose number two into this reading today? What is the energies here? Fight. <laughs> Are we feeling feisty today, right? Are we feeling pissed off? Are we ready to brawl? I know sometimes I am. I know I was on a it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right. And then we have the cat. Or do we just hit the reset button and say, fuck this? I'm not, it's not the worth, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So the uh the 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 tree, I'm sorry, the cat is the um the fool's energy. So it's about ground zero. Let's go back to ground zero. Let's hit the reset button. One plus nine is 10. 10 is, we're done. We're at the end. A situation's just kind of over. We're just over feeling this way. We don't want to fight anymore. We don't want to fight with ourselves. We don't want to fight with this person. We don't want to fight period. We just want freaking peace in our lives. That's what we want. That's what's bringing you to the reading today. That's amazing, right? Peace. Peace is what's bringing you to this reading today. How do you find it? How do you start over? How do you step that hit that reset button? I'm only here to give the, you know, to, to bring the messages through the cards. I'm not necessarily here to fix anybody's issues or to say this is the key to this or that. You've got to derive those messages for yourself. But there is a message here of wanting to start fresh, wanting to start new, wanting to take a risk perhaps and go in a new direction. Now we have the energy of alert. So something about alert, we're maybe on high alert for a reason. Fight or flight is in place for a reason. Now we have the 10 of earth, which is the 10 of pentacles. Okay, what I'm getting from this, because the 10 of pentacles is a really beautiful energy. The 10 of pentacles is about tradition. It's about the long-term goals that you have. It's about the white, you know, the house with the white picket fence and just kind of where you want to retire. You know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely about security. We have alert though. So there could be some kind of alert or something that's happening in your life right now that's causing concern for you. Maybe it's causing concern in your structure, in your home, with how you make money, with how you feel secure in the world. Something is happening for a reason. Something is kind of shaking your foundation is what I'm getting as well. So it could be that this is a wake up call. For me, this combination is like tower to me. I don't know why, but it's telling me that it's time for us to go in another direction. Whoever you're fighting with, whoever is causing perhaps, and it's not about causing, whatever you're allowing to cause you this kind of feeling of just being on high alert all the time or just feeling this state of anxiety. It's about, I don't want to feel that anymore. This isn't working for me anymore. It's time for me to go in a new direction. The Ten of Pentacles can sometimes be the dream that we have with someone. I want to be married to this person. I want to have a family. I want to have this and that. Maybe some kind of a dream is coming to an end. It's coming to a halt, a crash. You know, you're just kind of like, I don't know if this is something that I want anymore. I'm not even sure if that's possible. And if it's not possible, then I don't want to waste my time anymore. That's kind of what I'm getting. So something is happening for a reason. Okay, you've been alerted perhaps for a reason. It could even be that you've heard some sort of news that has caused some sort of dream that you have had about this particular individual to come crashing down. And so you're no longer willing to stay stuck anymore. 
we have adventure. You're on to your next adventure. I love it. All right. I don't know why, but the camera is not uh, angled correctly, so I don't have all the cards here on the screen. I'm going to put this right here. Ah! <laughs> I love it. The King of Wands. I'm on to my next adventure. Done! So... For some of you guys, you may want to be alone, and that's great because the, the King of Wands is somebody who's totally independent, is willing to go off into the world and create their own life to create their own adventures. They don't need a partner, okay? They don't. But if you want one, I am getting for some of you, on to your next adventure means that there may be a King of Wands coming into your life. There may be a King of Wands on your horizon if you want it. Somebody else that's going to bring forth passion and desire in your life. If you felt like this is the only person that you were ever going to feel this with, you're wrong. Not true. But the thing is, you'll never know it unless you put yourself out there like the fool and go off and find your next adventure. This king of wands can't be unless you let go and move forward into something else. So if you guys are watching number two, I'm not really feeling uncomfortable saying that because you want that. You're done. I'm getting here that it can be yours if you want it. If you really want it and you really want to cut away from old energy, when you do that and you really mean it and you're really ready, the universe is going to bring forth and usher in new adventures into your life. And when you're the king of wands, either you're that king of wands or you're dealing with the king of wands, it's amazing energy. Amazing energy. I love the king of wands. He's one of my favorite kings in the whole deck. So now let's go ahead and get the energy here of just you as a person, just you. We're going to break it down, okay? We're going to break down this energy and just kind of see where you're at at this time. So we're going to go into this next deck here. Everybody has, every deck has its own little sister. So this right here is called the Essential Oils deck. Very interesting deck. It's very cool. So some of you guys are into essential oils. Um, this could resonate, but it also could be, giving some um advice on what oils to use for specific things you know so i know that there's young living doTERRA oils i know there's all kinds of different oil companies out there but this right here could bring some significance so this right here is called the pre-raphaelite raphaelite tarot probably not saying that right let's go ahead and see what's going on in our mental space mental energy we have card cardamom this says um oh this is kind of a cool deck. We have integrity. That is the key word. The way this deck works, it says this is a trigger statement. So this could be something that we're feeling triggered right now. It's their fault. Do you see that? It's their fault. So cardamom, perhaps, could put us into alignment with integrity. This does not mean that these oils are magic and that they're doing this, but if you guys are guided to use oils, like people are guided to use stones, why not? So as emotions rise, go within to see what stories and memories are fueling them. Then release what is not serving you with gratitude. Can't believe this. So we're going to shift our statement in our mental space to my thoughts are the cause of my suffering. Exactly. What we're thinking, what we're thinking is what we are responsible for. Feeling. It's our own thoughts that are at the core of what we're feeling. That literally just came up at the very end of pile number one. So if you're watching this because you watched pile number one and you felt guided to watch number two, who knows? There could be some lingering messages here for you as well. And now we have the Knight of Wands. Okay, so this Knight of Wands character here, he does have a sword, but I'm pretty sure that is the Knight of Wands because he's holding a wand. Yeah, he's holding a wand. So the Knight of Wands character, he's a player. He's not the King of Wands. The King of Wands is somebody that you could probably settle down with and somebody that you could build a life with. But perhaps the person that you've been dealing with is a Knight of Wands. They've been in and out of your life. They've been on the edge of your life. They've never really been a stable character in your life. And you're tired of the shit. And you might want to blame them for everything. You might want to say it's all their fault. If they could just settle down, if, if, you know, if they could just love me instead of just want to have sex with me or whatever has happened here, you know, but the thing is we are responsible for our experiences. You guys, if you are allowing somebody to do this to you, that is why this is happening because you've allowed it. So it's not their fault. And it's not about blaming yourself either. It's about healing this energy. It's about healing this energy, releasing what is not serving you. So if a knight of wands is not serving you, 
it's time to cut them loose. It's time to cut that motherfucker loose. Sorry to say it, but that's just what I'm getting. So this could also be your own energy though. Knight of Wands. Hey, Knight of Wands is off to his next adventure. And that literally just came through at the very beginning of this reading. So this is about stepping into a new adventure, cutting away things that no longer serve. If you're not living your life and you're blaming other people because you can't move forward, it's not everybody else's fault. You have decisions to make on your own. You can move forward. You can open yourself up to new experiences and adventures if you want to. So what about the emotions? What's going on in the emotions? We have Rosemary. Okay, wisdom. It doesn't make sense. That's the trigger statement. Just doesn't make sense why this happened to me. I don't get it. It's not fair. I've said it a million times. So it says the true statement. I see a bigger picture as to why this happened to me. There's a reason that this happened to me. I get it now. It says you are moving towards a deeper level of understanding from knowledge to wisdom. Take time to absorb the lessons. Deep down in your heart, you guys, you know that something has happened for a reason. You just know. This person was a part of your soul's development and growth. Made you a stronger person. Put I can't believe it. Ten of swords came up two times or three times in number one. So again, if you have continued to watch this reading because you just felt like watching the entire reading, I do feel like there could be some messages here for you. Ten of swords, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get worse than that. To me, that's the worst card in tarot. I don't like the five of swords, but I don't like the ten of swords because the ten of swords means that you have felt just a, just defeated, backstabbed, lied to, unnecessary. I don't understand why this happens to me. It doesn't make sense. I'm also getting though for some of you, it doesn't make sense why I still care about this person. It doesn't make sense why I'm still feeling their energy. This is stupid. You're frustrated. So instead of fighting with yourself, instead of trying to go to drastic measures to get this person out of your energy, there's a reason that they might still be in your mind and in your energy field because there's something yet that you have still to learn in this situation. But you can still move forward in other partnerships and have this person in your energy field. You can still move on with your life. So there is something to learn about all this pain. There is wisdom in this pain that this person has delivered to your life. Seriously, that's deep. All right. Outer world, outer circumstances. Abrovatai, don't know how to say that. I know I'm butchering that, but hey, we got to go with the flow. We have to go with the flow. In our worlds, in our physical worlds, we can't let these things hold us back forever. It says, why are things such a struggle? It does. I mean, it's hard. It is hard to get up from the Ten of Swords. Literally, it's really hard to move with Ten Swords in your back. But guess what? That's just a trigger. That triggers this feeling in you as I'm dead, I can't get up. It's so, it's so hard. It's so hard to change. It's so hard to let this person go. You can do it. The true statement is, I am in the flow. Take a deep breath, dear one, and allow yourself to feel the flow of life through you. Release your need to do and just be. Sometimes there's not a damn thing that we can do when it comes to another person. All we can do is just take care of ourselves. That's all we control at the end of the day is our own behaviors and our own growth and our own movement in the world. We can't control other people. And when you try, it's not going to go so good. It's just not, just not going to go well. Eight of pentacles work. It's hard. Of course it's hard. No one said it wasn't. No one's trying to blow sunshine up your ass and say, it's easy. Just snap your fingers. You're done. You're good. You know, life is easy. It's not, but it's not necessarily hard either. Wisdom, the way that wisdom works is that at the end of the day, you're like, oh my God, if I knew it was this easy, I would have done this a long time ago. That's how wisdom works. It's a gift. <laughs> There's certain things where I'm just like, oh my God, had I only just made that switch of my mind, I didn't realize how happy I could be, you know, it just with the switch of energy. Sometimes, yes, it is that easy, but sometimes you guys, it is hard. It's going to take work. It takes work and dedication, eight of pentacles to change things, to change our behaviors to change circumstances, but it's not impossible. We can do it. Soul energy, higher self energy. 
inspiring freedom. We can be free. So, <laughs> you know what? I haven't used this deck in a long time, but damn, I feel like I'm going to be guided to use this deck more moving forward because, I mean, this is amazing. I have no choice. I'm going to tell you guys in this collective, especially in this Twin Flame collective, and I'm not going to sit here and talk about what, you know, what you should believe or what you shouldn't believe, but anything or anyone that is telling you that you cannot, you cannot be free from the pain and agony and all the stuff that you have connected to this individual, I don't know what the motive is, but that's a bullshit statement. That's a bullshit statement. So what, what does that do? It creates fear within you that says, I don't have any choice. We're bound for life. I do hear these, these, um, you know, these, these, uh, statements in the community. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm just trying to be dramatic to drive through the point. The point is there are people that feel like they are bound to other people that they will not be able to move forward in, with their lives until they are with this person. That's crazy. You do have a choice. We came into this life with free will. That was the beautiful gift. And again, I understand that there are certain, because every single time that I say that, there's always somebody in the comments that wants to challenge and say, we are not in control. We don't have free will, whatever. That's your mindset. If that works for you, fantastic. And if you're feeling peace with that mindset, great. But let me tell you something. A lot of people are not feeling peace with that. A lot of people are, are getting really screwed up with that kind of thinking, that they don't have a choice. I have this twin flame connection with somebody. I have this soul contract. And until I fulfill this, then I'm not going to be happy and that I can't love and grow and, and just be happy in life. Are you kidding me? True statement. I create my day and my life. I am in charge of my life. I create my, my own happiness. I create my own destiny. That's inspiring. That frees you from all this other crap that's either being spewed or spread out right now. You do have a choice. You can free yourself. You can move forward and be happy. You don't need this person to be happy. This person doesn't have to release you. You can release yourself. It is the time to play. Do something different today to shift your routine. If this routine that you guys have been on for a long period of time, if this connection isn't working for you, there's a reason. It's time to do something new. It's time to do something new. We've got the King of Cups. Beautiful. We have two kings coming up into this reading today. The King of Wands and now the King of Cups. The King of Cups is also awesome too. But the kings are about mastery. This does not have to be about a partner. If you guys are not interested in having a partner, so be it. Totally fine. I just happen to love it. I love having a partner. That's just me. That's just a part of who I am. That doesn't make me weak. It's just my choice. So if it's your choice to be alone, that is your choice too. Nothing wrong with that. But if some of you guys want a partner, then there may be a possibility. King of Wands, King of Cups come through this reading today. When you free yourself, when you free the ties that bind you, whatever's holding you back, you may be opening yourself up to new adventures with new people. We are the only things that are holding ourselves back. Our belief systems about this connection, about the rules, whatever is going around this community, that we can't do this and we can't do that. That's just, that's in our minds. That's holding our, ourselves back. The King of Cups, so can be your own energy. Mastering yourself in, on an emotional level and inspiring others to do the same and inspiring others through your mastery of the self spreading good vibes for all, empowering individuals, being an inspiring energy, period. Love it. Love it. So the thing is, you guys, because this particular reading is not about your person, it's about you. We're not going into it. We're not going into the energy of them. We're not. So we're going into this energy here of your own journey and what you are mastering, what you're working on right now, what you're dealing with. Let's take a look. So this is another beautiful deck. This is from 
Amanda Ellis, who is an angel reader, specifically working with Metatron. She's from the UK. A lot of you guys might already know her. She has a beautiful line of sprays and now this beautiful Oracle deck. So I will put her website down below. But this right here is called the Archangel Metatron Oracle Cards. So what are the energies that we're mastering? Okay, what are the energies that we're working with? Oh, I don't know why I just hit that. Let me just grab the, the tarot that goes with this. This right here is called the Spirit Song Tarot. I just grabbed the wrong cards, that's all. Spirit Song Tarot. All right, what are we mastering? What are we working with? What are we working on spiritually? Let me grab that card that fell. We have Dragon's Strength, so fire, fiery energy. And let me grab this other one. Okay, oh, shit. can't pick it up because of my... We have two, actually. These nails make it very difficult to pick anything up. Okay, we've got Signs from Spirit with Love, and we have Evolution, Birthing the New Oh, so gorgeous. I feel like this is our energy, so I'm going to stop here with um, getting cards. We're just going to get some tarot to clarify. To me, fiery energy, passion, strength, the phoenix rising, all of that energy has just made us stronger. What hasn't killed you has made you stronger. Whatever's pissed you off has forced you to just become that much stronger. Maybe it's even inspired you. We did just get the energy of inspiring. Sometimes things that happen to us can inspire change. It can really inspire us on a whole new level. That's been my experience. Because for a very long period of time, I was in some negative ass energy with someone. And until I learned to channel that in a creative way, it just was taking me down. And now it's just uplifting me. It's just improving my life every day. So I've learned to dance with the energy of that devil in my life. All right, fire's energy. What do we got? What do we got with fire, fire, fire? Ace of feathers, ace of swords, mental clarity and foundation. It's become suddenly clear what this journey is all about, why we had to go through what we had to go through. It was challenging, but guess what? What can we do with these challenges? The aces, you guys, are offers from the divine. It doesn't showcase it in all tarot decks, but the original Rider Waite shows a hand coming from the sky in all of the aces. It offers you something. In this case, it's the Ace of Swords. Take the Sword of Wisdom. Use it wisely. You can use it to cut and destroy, or you can use it to clarify and to become strong. The choice is always ours, what we can do with that sword but you've been gifted through perhaps this connection to help you to become a stronger person, to create a very strong foundation for yourself, okay? Through fire's energy. So signs from spirit with love. <clears throat> the king of acorns, which is the king of pentacles. We have three kings that have come through this reading here today. So this king of pentacles, of course, is his optimism, um, optimism and innovation. Signs from spirit here. Maybe the signs from spirit, you're getting signs from spirit when it comes to masculine energy, when it comes to your own masculine energy, when it comes to reminding you that you can be the provider of your own life. That's actually the message I'm getting. Signs are constantly with you, pushing you to grow, pushing you to master yourself, pushing you towards what is right for you. Now we have evolution, birthing the new. Oh my God, the six of wands. The six of wands is amazing. It's a card of triumph. It's a card of success, victory. You're riding the victory parade. You've done it. Congratulations. You're being recognized for your strengths because you have decided to evolve. Instead of hanging on to something, instead of dying in that energy, laying on the floor of tennis swords, nope, you're picking yourselves up and you guys are moving forward and you're evolving. That's what you're doing. You're evolving instead. You're choosing to live, not die. Beautiful. Oh, I just love it. So that's what's going on on your journey. It looks pretty badass to me. So let's now go ahead and get some other energies here. 
Let's see what the future energy looks like here for you. What does the future energy look like? Future energy, as we continue to just kind of try to stay in our own lane, move forward, stay in your own lane. That's a beautiful message that came to me from one of my good friends, Laura. She always has just the coolest things to say. Stay in your own lane. Okay. What are some upcoming energies here? Minding our business, just kind of doing our own thing. What's coming up for us? We have the third house perception. This set, oh, just so you guys know, I forgot to tell you these cards that I'm using. This deck right here is called the Brides, the Bridal Tarot, which is really cool. And then this one is called the um, Numinous Astro Deck. Speech, thoughts, social media, excursions, dating, siblings, research, street life, circulation, discussions surrounding sociability. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of energy that comes through that. So what's this third house energy have to do with? What's going on here? With the hanged man. The hanged man is what? The card of perception. It's seeing things from a different perspective. Perception. How we perceive things. How we look at things. The different angles. One person can see something in a situation and another person can see something completely different, okay? It's all in the way that you see things. But the hanged man's energy, of course, is not only about perspective and perception, it means something's on hold. So it just means that maybe something isn't moving forward. And I think for some of you, you're already in that energy where, you know what, you're okay with that. You're okay that this connection isn't moving forward. You're okay that nothing is happening here. This gives you time to grow, to ascend, to heal. So. I feel like that's what it comes down to. When it comes down to social media, the only reason I mention it, you guys, is because it's on that card. So if you guys are having issues where you're checking out somebody's social media, just stop. You don't need to do that anymore. Just pull back. Find a way to pull the plug and disengage. You cannot properly move forward if you're still just participating in that energy. So really try to put that on hold. Really take a break from that. Take a break from that shit. Because sometimes what you'll find is that, you know, you've had to block certain things and you've had to not participate in certain things for a while. And then you're like, you know what? It doesn't trigger me anymore. And you go to look and you're just kind of like, ah, it just doesn't bother me anymore. I've actually gone through that where I'm not triggered anymore by something that I see, which is great. I'm not seeking it out, but if I happen to see it, it pops up in my newsfeed, eh, okay, whatever. So we're moving forward. We're just kind of maybe pulling away here and there tweaking some things, taking a little bit of break. It's all good stuff. Mercury. Well, Mercury is in retrograde. That makes a lot of sense to me. So <laughs> maybe that's the reason that we're doing it. Maybe we're pulling away from social media. Maybe we're just kind of taking a little bit of break for just reflection during a period of time where things might go a little bit of haywire. But see, the thing is, I did post something on my Instagram just the other night that talked about the things that I was going to do with the positive aspects of Mercury retrograde. A lot of people have a tendency to go, oh shit, Mercury's in retrograde, everything's fucked. Well, I don't really like to be um, controlled by what the masses are talking about, and so I choose to go about it a different way. But it does say words, thoughts, Analysis, information, learning, trade, ideas, smarts, reporting, awareness, vision, lens, palette, perception, so double confirmation of perception, curiosity, narrative, muse, wonder. What are people's narratives? What are people trying to push? We, have, we also have to protect ourselves when it comes to things that we're watching or that we're even seeing, and it could even be my videos. Maybe I have some sort of narrative that I'm trying to put out, and maybe that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe it does. You guys all have to be very discerning with what you subject yourselves to. But we have the three of wands. Three of wands is about waiting. The three of wands is about something that's out there, waiting for our ships to come in. So I do feel like this is not an action-oriented card. We are getting threes. Three, three, one plus two, three. Threes are coming through, three, three, three. There's a special message for some of you guys moving forward in the future. Maybe you guys are wanting to do something, make a decision. But what I'm getting here is perhaps hold off during this period of time, Mercury retrograde, perhaps. I don't know. I usually don't get caught up in that, but I am getting that. Last message. Capricorn, the boss, could be work-related. We did just get the King of Pentacles. Literally, the King of Pentacles right before we went into this. 
So there could be a king of pentacles energy around you. It could be your boss. It could be you becoming your own boss, being a boss person. It says serious, authoritative, ambitious, realistic, structured, traditional, wise, enduring, accomplished, badass. That's what I'm talking about. Majestic, competent, prepared, down to earth, corporate, reserved, rigid, and disciplined. What the heck is this all about? Okay, well, we have the Father of Knives, which is the King of Swords. So the, this could be like a type of person like this in your life, or this is you dealing with this individual in a boss way. As in, you're not allowing this person to get you down. You're, you're, you might just be guided to stay away from this person or to disengage with this individual is what I'm getting here. The King of Swords is somebody who is very authoritative as well. Somebody who um, can be kind of disconnected, cold, and even heartless sometimes. So if you already know that you're dealing with somebody like this, it's kind of like, why would you put yourself into that den, that lion's den with this individual? It might be time for you rather than trying to communicate with somebody or to come towards something or to make something happen right now, perhaps during this Mercury retrograde, it might be best for you to pull away and let things just kind of marinate and kind of sit on it, hanged man, see things from a different perspective. And then maybe once this Mercury retrograde is over next month, it could be that maybe something will shift and change. So I don't know why that card, those cards came up the way that they did, you guys, but there's a special message for somebody out there when it comes to this. King of Swords can be an air sign, Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius, and we also just did get Capricorn. So there could be significance there. I don't know. So we're going to end this reading now with just advice from spirit. Advice from spirit. This right here is called The Long Way Home Tarot. And this is Postcards from the Luminous Space. What does Spirit want to tell us to close up this reading for those that chose number two? Memory Lane. Beautiful memories. Going down memory lane. Seven of Swords. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. When I think about a particular person, unfortunately, that's a part of it. Seven of Swords. Okay. I try to be in a loving space with this individual. I try to unconditionally love this person. I try to see the higher reason here for what's happened. I try to be in a good energy. But my mind does creep to the bullshit that went, that went down. That was some sneaky crap. That was some lies. That was some deception. That was some unnecessary energy, in my opinion. But it did serve a purpose. It did help me to learn something. It helped me to, when I move forward in other situations, the red flags to look out for. Don't really, I'm not interested in going down that road again with somebody. It's just made me a smarter, more well-rounded person. So these memories do serve a purpose, but it's not about holding on to them and staying in a low vibrational state with this person. It's about trying to make peace with what's happened here. What was wrong could even be your own energies. Maybe you even look at yourself and think, God, I wish I would have done something differently. I wish I would have, I wish I would have just been open and honest. I wish I just would have been forthcoming. Sometimes when we deal with situations or people and we have a certain agenda, that's a manipulation. It doesn't sound like it or seem like it to us, but it is because we want something to happen. And so we maybe go around the situation and we say this, but we mean that because we're trying to get this and that. So our own sneaky behavior or our own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, this is about st strategy. Our own strategic behavior can sometimes come across to other people as manipulative and deceptive. Maybe even that's not what you even meant to be in. Maybe that could even be your person. So thinking back, maybe things weren't really as bad as you thought they were. Maybe the memories aren't really that negative. Again, it's what we're feeding ourselves. It's what we're telling ourselves that creates the energy that holds us back or lets us feel peace. 
So when you think about this particular individual, it might be that it's time to let the seven of swords crap go because it's not really serving you. But the thing is, I am also getting, I just have to say it. This does serve as a boundary to put up perhaps. And it instills a healthy boundary with you now moving forward. So again, there's like, it's a double edged sword. Here's what I'm seeing does serve a higher purpose. It just does. Snake medicine. Ooh, -hoo, I love this. Okay. Remedies and snake medicine. Son of swords, which is the uh, knight of swords. Knight of swords. So the knight of swords is an energy where, you know, we're going off to battle perhaps. And we've got our sword and we're wanting truth. We're wanting clarity. We're wanting action. We're also wanting truth and justice perhaps we're wanting to cut through the bullshit well snake medicine that particular card to me is like um um antidotes to poison um this is about uh what do they call that when you get bit by a rattlesnake and it's the um I don't know why I can't think of it. I know someone's going to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. It's like the thing, the, the antidote, the, the remedy. Uh, it's basically poison, but it's working in a way to heal you. So do you see how this is all coming through, you guys? This person's energy, what you had to go through with them, it's a double-edged sword. So this just means that you can keep them in your mind and your energy in a hateful, negative place, or you can try to move forward and make peace with the situation and see the blessing in it. It's a blessing in disguise though. It's not, it's not like it's, it's evident like, oh yeah, that's why this happened to me. Oh my God, this is so amazing. It's not that kind of energy. You really have to dig deep on this one. You really have to go deep within your soul into your darkness to find the light with this one. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I had to face my darkness in order to get to the light with this person. But I've got some gray areas still that I deal with. Do you see this? That's a tornado. I just noticed that on that card. This person has created a storm within you for a reason, but it is to get you to this medicine cabinet. How can you make this medicine, but it's poison. How can you make it work for you? How can you become immune to this poison? It's by dealing with it. It's by facing it. This is shadow work at its finest. Facing your shadows learn or facing your shadows leads to your greatest strength. This terrible thing that may have happened to you with this individual leads you to your greatest self. Hating this person leads you to loving them and loving yourself. Whoa, <laughs> this is amazing. All right, you guys, last message. Oh my God, I don't know how long this video is going to take to upload. It's like we're already at 142. <laughs> Not normal breaking news. Okay, let's get the terror on this. All right, Spirit, what do you got for us at this very end of this reading? Oh my God, we have strength. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God, Spirit astounds me. Okay, again. Your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Your greatest fear is your greatest gift. I mean, I just keep getting that. It's all intertwined. This darkness, this just poison, this everything that you've had to go through with this individual is actually meant to strengthen you and bless you. This, your greatest enemy is your biggest blessing. And it might not feel normal to you. It might not seem normal that you would even feel this person's energy after everything that happened here. It just doesn't seem normal. What's wrong with me is what I'm getting here. What's wrong with me? Breaking news. Breaking news is telling you it's not normal, but what's normal anyways? There's something significant here. There's something special. There's something that's been specially designed for you in this life when it comes to this person. So you don't have to hate them. You don't have to obsess over them either. But there is some sort of wisdom 
to learn and derive from this entire situation. And you're on your way. You're on your way. So it's only going to be up from here. And you might have some pitfalls and some shit storms still ahead, but you're going to know how to deal with it because you've become a much stronger person through this entire experience. Oh. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this reading today. And um, I'll uh, just catch you guys on Wednesday with some other messages. Take care. Bye-bye.